Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today I'm here with my wife, Gina, and we are doing another episode of Covert Go Lore. This one is called Aim Through the Target, and these are the side stories from Kaldheim. Take it away, Gina! Woo! Wow, with all that hype, how, how could I fail? <laughs> the story continues by Setsu Izume. And if you remember last time, basically, Nico was hanging out with some polar bear people and ended up trapping a Valkyrie in a Mearshard, and now he's going to Valkyrie land to warn them a big snake is coming. That's really all you needed to know. Sound good? Yeah. <laughs> all right. And Bergie's a drama queen. And Bergie's a drama Go. queen. Okay. So, Nico is now in Sternheim. Nico hops off the boat and onto a plank of wood with a light thump and then checks the weather app on their phone because they expected to feel the icy bite of winter, but the air is cool and bracing. This this doesn't sound like canon. Okay, I should add this, these. Uh, this this, this story, the story is the way the story is interpreted by Gina. <laughs> Go on. It's exactly what happened. They have out their phone. They look at the weather. They're like, "This is perfect tournament weather. I should know. I'm an expert at tournaments. I'm so good at sports." So, in the bright light and the cool mist, there's no land anywhere in sight on Starnheim. Just docks. Docks and docks and docks. A vast network of docks. They're crossing and recrossing. And in the wood of these really special docks is carved lots of animals. Like bears and dragons and boars and rabbits and squirrels and fish and whales. And because Nico is an animal lover, Nico happily dances around these carvings on the dock. I, oh, I Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the story. Okay. Ahead, there's a super big, magnificent hall that is tented under the branches of the world tree. And at the base is a large stairway. And every step up the staircase feels like a long journey coming to an end. Nico now understands why this place is such a big deal to everyone in Bredegard. It feels better than relief or celebration. Starnheim feels like home. <laughs> okay. Nico enters the hall and they see all kinds of people. There's warriors and poets and humans, dwarves, giants, elves, farmers, scholars. Everybody's laughing and they're telling stories. And the smell in the air is roasting meat, seasoned veggies, crackling logs on the fireplace. Now Nico sees what people really love about Starnheim. Unlimited refills! Oh yeah. Yeah! It's really cool. The happy dead people shout their drink order into their giant drinking horns and then watch as they fill up with whatever they like. Like, uh, oh, I want that great wine that I had at my cousin's wedding. Boom! You get it now. That's pretty incredible. I think so, too. It's next level. When, yeah. If we ever go out to eat, ever again yeah. in our lives. Unlimited refills. By yelling into my horn. Yeah. Uh, one of the omen seekers requests Dros and a warrior with a flaming red beard burps really loud. You got a burp in you? For atmosphere? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Throw. Sorry. I had to separate it from the bolus voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and after the burp <laughs> the warrior asks, what in all the realms is Dros? And the Omen Seeker explains, ah, oh, it's, it's so good. It's, it's dragon egg whites whipped into a cream infused with herbs and, and sap resin. Mm. And Flamebeard's like, is that how you died? Someone else asks, like, oh, how could you let such filth touch your mouth? This is where Nico decides to jump into the conversation with, I asked your wife the same thing when I left her on the shore. Boom! Sick burn! Air horns. Everybody laughs and the group offers Nico a drinking horn and they pretend to drink because, you know, they're here for work. I always just go in and drop a line like that on people I don't know. Like, hey, by the way. 
So, some introductions are made around the table, it doesn't really matter. But it turns out that this one woman in Splint Mail is Thura Sailrend, a great warrior. Nico's like, oh yeah, I heard of you. Fergie was just like telling your tale to a room of Canna and Omen Seekers. Like, lots of people know who you are. That's throwback to the last story. Yeah, and Sailrend goes, Oh yeah! Check it, everybody! The storyteller is telling my story to your people, so everybody drink fermented shark's blood! Yeah! Go! Drink, 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 drink! You haven't been to many parties. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes! <laughs> Heaven is a fraternity all over again. <laughs> So the people around the table just like roll their eyes and they drink and one of them's like yeah i'm i'm really so tired of hearing the song of your death hey let's hear more about you turns to nico and nico's like ah nico eris they of Meletis, and i am here because i never miss and then nico launches into their whole epic tale the super long training montages their destiny, intentionally losing at the tournament, yada yada yada, they're very important. And then, Nico spots a cat in the corner, so they hand off the drinking horn and abruptly leave. They're that person at the party. Straight to the cat. <laughs> yep. But this is a huge, fluffy kitty. It's at least twice the size of Threat, the cat from the last story. And Nico's eyes turn into big anime heart eyes. And they follow the kitty because they just need a little cuddle from this big fluffy baby. <laughs> I, this, this is just normal at our house. Yeah. <laughs> so the cat leads Nico to a quiet hall with a black stone floor and a silent thunderstorm ceiling. Which is a nice touch, I think. And Nico hears a voice wondering, well, if, if travel continues to be this challenging... How can we collect the dead and bring them back here unharmed? Nico has just walked into a giant boardroom meeting of Valkyries. That's There's... what happens when you follow the kitty mm -hmm. without paying attention to where the kitty is going. I, oh, <laughs> just jumped into your meeting here. And there's dozens of Valkyries. They're scattered all over the branches of the world tree. And one pale winged Valkyrie sees Nico and the cat. And shouts, oh, Aggressor! Oh, my big sweetie, did you make a little friend? And then Aniko, um, you lost. Uh, you're, you should go back to the feast. So Aggressor is the name of the cat. Yeah. I thought we were shouting at the trespassing person. That's what Nico thought, too. It was really confusing. Okay. <laughs> and Nico's like, oh, yeah, um, actually, I don't belong in the hall. I'm not supposed to be here. And a dark-winged Valkyrie says, Hey, be brave. I know it's hard being dead, but you're supposed to be at the party. That's where the people go. Excuse me, I'm not dead. <laughs> so Nico calls on their tournament stadium voice and projects, I am from Theros, a place that has never heard of you. I am Nikos Eris, and I captured one of you to stop a meaningless death and find a way here to warn you. The Cosmos Serpent is coming for you and will wreck this place, wreck your hall, obliterate your dead, drain your lake. It's going to be really bad. I know. Very impressive. Very impressive. Okay. <laughs> the group mostly just kind of raises their eyebrows. And a Valkyrie with white gold hair says, Uh, that's not possible. Our security is airtight. And Nico shoots back, And yet no one greeted me at the door. Like, your cat has better manners. Mm. And the cat jumps on that Valkyrie shoulder like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> so finally, the Valkyrie that Nico captured in the mirror trap from last episode bursts into the room. <laughs> Dramatic. His name is Avtir, and he is really mad. He's soaking wet, his feathers are all messed up, the rage is very, very strong. And he says, Found you! This mortal interrupted our judgment and showed no respect for Kaldheim laws. Their story is crap, no way that snake is coming here, they must be punished! I mean, 
And he goes, pulls out a mirror shard and is like, look, you were just in a trap. You were never in danger from me. Like, I let you go before I crossed over here. Like, exaggerate much? Then, something dramatic happens. All eyes shoot to the skies because the twilight looks like it's boiling. And in each bubble, there is a different realm. And it looks like dozens of doom scars. Doom scars. Thank you. And they're pressing in on the edges of Starnheim. <laughs> they can see lakes of fire and mountains and fields. And one of the bubbles, it gets real big. And it pops. And who comes out? Terrifying scales that make up Coma, the Cosmos Serpent. It is Coma again! <laughs> yep. Yay! Coma is slithering into Starnheim. And it opens up its jaw, dislocates it, and releases a shriek. I, <laughs> I pictured something cooler. <laughs> maybe, maybe the editor will add a cooler shriek. Okay. Uh, rippling through the sky. A tortured cacophony of twisted metal, toppled cities, and whole worlds ground to dust. Yeah, th yeah, we need something cooler. Yeah. <laughs> to <embody laughs> then, that. Ah! <laughs> There's a Godzilla roar available. Yeah. So, Nico looks around the Valkyries like, anyone gonna step forward and be a leader now? Mm -hmm. But all their jaws are just on the floor. They look real scared. And one of them's like, this shouldn't be possible. And then Abateer says, well, someone must have sent it to attack us. But why? And then another Valkyrie shows up, one Nico recognizes as Abateer's partner from the previous story. Uh, her name is Ritava. And she says, well, we have to fight it. We can't let it harm the people. Abteer says, no, we gotta bounce. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ritava says, not when the way between worlds is so unstable, and I won't abandon our home without a fight. Mm. The snake above is just lunging toward the churning clouds, jaws snapping like a boulder split by lightning. <laughs> Nico takes this moment to remember, huh, it was really fun when I played with that kitty. I've got an idea! Big light bulb. If we can't fight, and we can't run, we have to herd it out through an omen path. Gotta like fly in close, make it chase you, the way a cat chases toys. It's all, it all comes back to playing with cats. That's why it's so that important. That solves everything. <laughs> so, Avtir grimly nods and says, well, if we're gonna do this. Let's make sure we at least send it back in the right omen path. We don't want to send it some random, undeserving place. Everyone's like, yeah, that sounds good. And so the two Valkyries with speaking roles get out their battle horns and blow. All Valkyries assemble! And they check their armor and gear, get battle ready. And Nico thinks, of, like, I just wanted to come here and warn the Valkyries. And now here I am making the plan and leading the charge into battle. And... These Valkyries are immortal, but they might die in this fight. It's a different situation on Starnheim. You ready for the action scene? Yeah. Oh, here we go! Mm. All right. 40 Valkyries fly into the sky. <laughs> Ritava is carrying Nico, and Nico's stomach drops as they soar into the clouds. And the sky continues to bubble with visions of primordial forests and charred remains of villages that become sharp and then fade and the giant snake is just swimming through the sky and Nico's mouth gets dry from fear but they manage to make a mere javelin and they point it at their first target like mm, over there uh, which is Coma's skull like, mm. and the Valkyries are like mm -hmm. and they fly Nico in closer Nico jumps down onto Coma and then gets their balance. And then they bear crawl through the scales. <laughs> and, then, and then slides down. Dicey. And buries their spear in a coma skull. And once the skull is pierced, they hold on for dear life and use their power 
and make the spear into like an anchor on the inside of the snake so it like really sticks in there into the snake's flesh and it smells so bad it smells like charred metal and acid because the snake's blood is acidic and you go super trying to avoid getting their feet into it hoping that their boots will save them from like the burning that is totally happening acid for blood yeah so coma's like the alien in alien yeah so ugh, don't want to touch that cool so now that nico's in position uh they raise their hand and ab tier sounds his horn a squad of five valkyries fly forward and beat their swords against their shields taunting coma come and get it it's supper time over here hey you big snake so coma takes the bait and flies after them Big Snake opens its jaws, wants to snack on the slowest Valkyrie, and poof, poof! It disintegrates into a thousand pieces, because Nico saved it with a mirror trap. Blink! And the mirror shard just kind of falls out of harm's way, and Nico releases the trap. Valkyrie pops out, shakes it off, and flies away safely. The next squad flies in and takes over with, you know, hurling insults and taunting the Big Snake. Hey, hey, you big stupid snake. Hey, you're, you're ugly. Ugly snake. You, <laughs> you didn't do much insulting, did you? You're. You smell bad. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> the snake chases them. But every time the snake tries to strike, Nico saves Valkyries with mirror traps. Like, bling, bling, saving Valkyries. But then Koma starts to feel like this itch on the back of his head. It starts to whip around. And, and Nico, like, lets the first javelin shatter. <laughs> And then makes like two shorter spears, pew, pew, stabs back in. And Koma howls! And every inch of Nico's body is just clinging to Koma's scales, even as the serpent's acidic blood is making their armor sizzle. Are you liking all this atmosphere? Yeah! Yeah! More atmosphere! So Nico's holding on yeah. and scanning the skies <laughs> for the correct omen path. Where could it be? Where could it be? Their arms are burning! holding on to a really big snake, but they have to keep going. Eyes are bleary from the wind. And then Nico finally spots an omen path. It's unlike any of the others. It's showing billowing clouds glowing with flame and bodies in a battle like the end of the world. And it's down by the docks. Maybe this is the right one? Uh, so Nico shouts, there, fast. It's the one labeled battle for Kaldheim. Go that in one. that one. <laughs> So the horn blows, the last squad of Valkyries mobilizes and taunts the snake into following them. Here, over here, you're ugly. And then they, they nosedive for the omen path, near the docks. At the very last second, they pull up, fly away, and the snake keeps going. Boom! At the moment of impact, Nico is thrown off the serpent's head, and the snake falls through the hole in the world. <sighs> Nico's like, okay, okay, and tries to crawl away. But then the broken docks collapse <gasps> and and grabs for anything. Now they're hanging on to a board, their bodies in the air over the hole. But their arms are so tired from all that snake riding. And Nico thinks, you know, this was exactly where I aimed. I never miss. Tired, Nico's eyes turn up to the lights of Starnheim. The short path to journey's end, and they let go. Nico falls, feels cold, and thinks, maybe this isn't so bad. Then, Avtir's hand grabs Nico's wrist, the same Valkyrie that was in the pocket trap at the beginning of the episode. I'll never let go, Nico. <laughs> and Nico mumbles, you done watching, Reaper? <laughs> and Avtir answers, your fate isn't decided yet. And Nico laughs through cracked lips <laughs> and says, Fates, just someone else telling you who to be. Gotta have that last word. <laughs> so then they hold hands and fly down together through the omen path, a silver javelin materializing in Nico's hand, and the horde of Valkyries follow as they plummet toward battle and fall becomes flight. And that's how they ended up at the Battle for Kaldheim.
That answers so many questions I had. Because we did. were reading the other story, and they just come out of the sky, have a snake and some angels and an eco, and... Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah. They're here. Okay. So They're that's, here. That's what happened. They, Epic. They played kitty kitty tricks on, on the snake. Yeah, they turned the <laughs> snake and they treated it like a big cat, and it worked out. Mm-hmm. So, did you like it? I liked it. There was a giant snake mm-hmm. fighting a bunch of angels... And a literal, like, ride of the Valkyries moment. And uh, Nico used all the Nico skills to do all kinds of fighting. And it was fun. You know, good story. Good yeah. magic story. Good MTG lore. Yeah. Nico just wanted to give a message, but then they ended up leading the battle and doing all the cool things and, and stuff. It was really cool. Indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you. For watching this video and as always we will see you in the next video as we continue the side stories for Kaldheim and prepare for the lore of Strixhaven coming in about a month. So, oh really? Yeah it's exciting right? Ooh. So uh, until then you're cool. How long should we hold this pose? <laughs> Until Maddie B finishes the little scene at the end that he likes to do that makes us look funny and goofy. He should be done. Okay. Okay.